What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Zapier, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. And, you know, Alex, I say it's always interesting to hear the story of, you know, like Noah Alper, who created and sold his chain of bagel stores to Einstein's for $100 million in 1995. But what I get off on, what I love is, and what people don't realize is, before that, he was selling religious tchotchkes out of his trunk, and the business was a flop, and it failed. And so he had a lot of different, you know, fail points or learning points before he kind of hit on his big thing. And I kind of love to hear the background and challenges. So... Uh, before I introduce you to today's guest, it, it was an amazing story. Um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Um, Rise25 and my mission, and Alex and I were talking about it before, is just to connect people, connect people with their best customers, referral partners, whoever it is, um, to help their, their business in life. And we do that in three ways formally. You know, we do it informally to people all the time, but formally we have a done for you media and content where we help a company completely run and launch their own podcast. We distribute it across 11 different channels, including a dedicated blog post and social media for a lot of content marketing. And the person simply shows up and talks and we do everything else. Our team has been working with podcasters since 2009. I personally credit podcasting as the single best thing I've done for my business and my life, besides meeting really cool people and nice founders, um, I've made best friends, found my business partner, and it's led to a lot of countless customers and referral partners. Um, the second is our done for you lead generation. We manually send out a consistent outreach message to ideal clients and referral partners or sources for people. This is not paid traffic. We also do done for you events at different conferences and software companies to bring their highest level customers together. Um, I have to mention uh, Sticker Mule as well. Sticker Mule has given me access to an amazing offer, Alex, and they said if it goes viral, they will cancel it, and um, or you'll go to a page and you'll see a dollar off. But the the deal is ten custom stickers for a dollar. Sticker Mule works with Nike, Amazon, Google, Netflix, and basically in like sixty seconds, you can upload your logo and you can get custom stickers, magnets, buttons, and their stickers are very high quality. I figured they'd do that because probably once they get you hooked, you just keep going back for more. So if you go to stickermule.com slash inspired, you can get 10 custom stickers for $1. Um, I'm excited to introduce today's guest who's done some remarkable things um, in AI and IA. We'll talk about what that means. But um, Alex Bates has spent the last decade bringing artificial intelligence and machine learning to the forefront of the industrial market. And in 2016, Alex sold his company, Mtel, to Aspen Tech for $38 million. And unlike most tech startups, Alex and his co-founder raised only a million dollars in funding and maintained ownership of the majority of the company. And as part of the acquisition, Alex had to stay with Aspen Tech for two years. Uh, what happened at 5 p.m. on the day his two years was up is he resigned and he's dedicating his life to driving AI tech forward. Um, he does have a book, Augmented Mind, um, AI, Superhumans, and the Next Economic Revolution. You can find it on Amazon. You will be able to find it on Audible. So I'm looking forward to that. And he's an active angel investor, partner in AI incubator, The Sandbox. You can find out about everything he's doing at um, neocortexventures.com. And just to show you how intelligent Alex is, I had to read how MTEL was described in my re when I was doing research several times. I'm not sure I fully comprehend it, but um, essentially what it did was it harnesses the deluge of sensor data with the mission of creating a world that doesn't break down. And so basically, MTEL's machine learning platform was used to monitor global fleets of offshore drilling rigs, railroad engines, and process equipment, um, in effect, creating a you know, distributed immune system to protect equipment and personnel. So he's got three patents and I think he's majored and had seven majors in college. Alex, thanks for joining me. When you say superhuman, what does that mean to you? 
Well, right now, I think we're very imperfect machines. We're, we go through these highs and lows of motivation. There's some new research coming out on flow state and, and how we very rarely are in flow state. And it's just amazing when we are, like, what we can accomplish. And so thinking ahead, if we could spend a lot more of our time in this sort of flow state, whatever our passion and gifts are, maybe it's engineering, maybe it's art or design, and and we could accomplish so much more of what actually we're passionate about and so so I, I i see that happening i think economically it'll be a little bit of a rocky road because getting to a post-scarcity era there's going to be some things we'll have to figure out and sort through so I, i'm not saying it's going to be this you know easy overnight transition right. but i think i think it'll be pretty amazing once we get through it so alex what do you do to optimize or increase your flow state, or I'm sure you have like regiments of I don't know food, diet, whatever else. What what kind of what kind of interesting kind of habits have you put in place? Yeah, well, a lot of how I approach some of the projects I work on now, which are, are a lot of them are just pet projects, is how can I augment myself or areas everything from communication, email, uh, my calendar any inefficiencies with with technology to and 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 another example is they, there's this book called the paradox of choice where humans actually like freedom but we don't like too much freedom we don't want to make too many choices or decisions and so if i could have an ai that figured out what i liked and made all the menial decisions day by day i could just focus on the small number of decisions that that i want to focus on you know like i say steve jobs doesn't even he would wear the same outfit every totally. day, right? Small stuff like that actually magnifies over time. So I'm trying to augment myself with AI to offload as much of the manual stuff as possible. So, and and you also are involved in, in Peter Diamandis' group, right? The Abundance 360. What have you learned from from Peter and the people in, in that group? Yeah, so there, there's the upcoming uh, Abundance 360 event here coming up late January in a couple of weeks. And so, but Peter, he's a technology visionary. And I think he's one of the people, his books like Bold and some of the other abundance book. Totally. Um, he sets a really clear vision of what I see as a post scarcity era that we have coming up. And um, so I've learned just part of it is from an inspiration perspective, but also practically with the X prize foundation and with some of the other groups he's put together, like singularity mm-hmm. university of building networks of people that are helping manifest some of these transformational technologies. Who do you look at also as a leader in these space, like Peter Diamandis? Peter Diamandis, Peter Thiel is another where he's more of a behind the scenes guy, you know, PayPal co-founder, yeah. not as well known, but kind of the mafia Don of Silicon Valley, but he, uh, he funds a lot of really interesting things, even like seasteading where they're exploring artificial nation state, islands that like modular islands explore some of these kinds of concepts so i'd say he's a, he's a visionary on a m- multiple levels and of course elon musk for pushing forward with multi-planetary and energy and all that kind of thing yeah um so the what is one of your favorite parts of the book or favorite story from the book augmented mind let's see the um one one of the fun areas to write which I actually learned a lot of surprising information because I, I went back and did a lot of research on neuroscience and, and did some interviews. The section I wrote on what makes humans special because hmm. I went on what makes AI special and what its strengths are and then one on what makes humans special. And I was really um, surprised and intrigued by what I learned about how we have these epiphanies or eureka moments. And there's some amazing new neuroscience that's come out um, that where they've used fMRIs and they can look at some of the networks and it turns out there's two different neural networks that work in tandem when we have these epiphanies and one's called the default mode network one's called the central executive but when you have an epiphany and it almost feels like something from the beyond like from another world this this idea jumps into your head and they've now have some interesting ideas of how those two networks interact and when it like default mode network passes it up to the central executive and hmm. you have your and that was fascinating to me and and again a thing where it's ai is still doesn't even approach things that way is there anything on how we can have more epiphanies <laughs> or more just how they work the, the neuroscience behind it 
Yeah, I think a little bit of practical. I mean, I, I'd say one is they tend to come about during these moments of flow state or what they call like directed wandering. You have to give yourself more time for sort of daydreaming, if you will. And most of us give ourselves no time for it's that. It's a little bit that counterintuitive, time. right? Yeah. Like the, if you're hard charging, you're like, I just need to put my nose to the grindstone to get it done, then it probably is, is more likely not going to happen sounds like really counterintuitive it's like you can actually be too disciplined and maybe shut down that creative epiphany machine that you have and so if you know if we my, my hope is if we can offload the menial tasks then we should have more time for some of that uh just sort of epiphany but the, also just to um the other interesting part was you do have to first put in the hard work of becoming an expert so you don't have an epiphany until you've spent however many years really getting deep into one domain, and then you can have an epiphany that can change the whole field. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, I have two last questions, but everyone should check out. Where should we point people towards to check out? I mean, I know you have Neocortex Ventures, um, and I know you have the book. Um, where should we point people towards to find out more? Well, I, I have one combined website called alexbates.ai where okay. I, I link to all the different kind of um, projects and companies I'm involved in. So that, that's one resource. Um, and yeah, then the book, um, there's a website, augmentedmind.com. But uh, yeah, that, that, the main one would probably be alexbates.ai. Alex AI. Okay, great. Everyone check out alexbates.ai. Um, Alex, I always like to ask, because uh, it's Inspired Insider, what has been you know, a low moment that you had to kind of push through? Um, and then on the flip side, what's been a proud moment? What's been a tough time? Yeah, a tough time one would would definitely be when uh, one of the moments where we had a company come and approach us about acquiring our company and get what we thought was close to the finish line and had the whole thing fall through and pull the plug. Uh, that was one of those moments where we all came close to just folding up shop. We're like, this is it. There's no way we'll come back from this. But ultimately we did two years later but um yes yeah, so that'd be a low point at that and then point I, when you you're at that point you're like let's fold everything up what i mean you could have folded things up at that point what do you think at that point caused you um to not give up and just stop yeah that's a that's a i, I think well one is i was just i was super passionate about both the technology of of neural networks i always i saw the promise of it and then also our mission of creating a world that doesn't break down i saw it as and i think um it was a combination of just and, and maybe also just tenacity and persistence like i was like we're not going to let them we're not going to let yeah. them shut us down you know they, they didn't move forward but someone else will so it was a little bit of refusing it's like to the just, stubbornness stubbornness i guess yeah 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 because i mean um when I was reading about some of the things you were, you know, growing up, it sounded like you had to kind of fight for your time on the computer, right? That's right, yeah. How many siblings did you have? Well, two siblings, and so my brother was my chief competitor for time on the one family computer at right. the time. So, yeah, a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of battles for that. And then, um, I don't know if this is accurate, but I think I read, like, you had to move six times in elementary school to different places. That's right. Yeah, lots of different cities and across both coasts. So how did that? How do you think that affected you? I mean, because then you you sort of have to adapt quickly, and you you sort of have to just I don't know make do. But at the time, were you even thinking that or? Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of it's a very dynamic. You know, every one to two years, you're moving into school, trying to make new friends, and I think it it actually made me a lot more adaptable to new cities and just new experiences and um you know some of my friends that grew up in portland and never moved they're, they're still in portland whereas i think i had a much more a perspective about embracing change in some respects yeah so on the flip side um a proud moment especially a proud moment a proud moment um one was actually um finishing the book itself because I embarked on that project, and I think I underestimated how much work it was. I, I figured you just... You're like, you can code up an oil rig for AI in like a day. 
but then writing book after two years. <laughs> oh man, it was uh, it was a lot of work, and it's a lot more than narrating into your iPhone. I can I can tell you that much. So I think I, I went through periods of like fatigue where I would yeah I'd probably get burned out a few times, and I'd be laying on the couch like just trying to type like a keystroke at a time and I could barely have enough energy to like hit a keystroke. But once I, once I finally finished it, um, and got, you know, went through my editorial reviews, um, it was just such a, such a release. So that was, that was definitely a, a proud moment. And now people can find it on Amazon and, um, it will be an audible, it will be an audio book as well. That's right. It's kind of like digital pre-release form and the official publication will be, um, coming up in April. Yeah. Cool. Alex, thank you so much. I want to be the first one to thank you. I mean, I just love hearing your perspective and thoughts um, because you do have a lot of of data at your fingertips and also just have a lot of interesting ideas on on the future. So everyone should check out alexabates.ai and um, check out what he's doing. Thanks again. Thanks so much for having me. Really. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find it.